Hey guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC and Forward YouTube channel. Got Steve uh, filming, and today we're going to show you, show you guys. This is the first flight out on the uh, Blitz RC Works coming from Banana Hobby. This is the 1100mm uh, Spitfire. It's running on a 3S pack. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, check out the building uh, or the assembly on it. We'll, we'll, that's already on the channel, so you know, uh, check it out there. And, uh, and uh, I go into a lot of detail there on how to set this up. But today we have our first flight. So a couple things that I wanted to note on this thing is that uh, one, I'm gonna power it up first and, and show you guys a couple of things. Um, I went ahead and I changed the elevator horn um, on, the, on the servo itself. Now you can't see it here, but I will put an overlay up here somewhere that you can see. I think I moved it to the second or third kind of hole from the center because it just seemed like the elevator had a ton of throw in it and it really just didn't, didn't need it. Um, so you can see right here, um, the high, medium, and the low rates on it. This is high if you want to get on that elevator, Steve. That's yep. medium, that's low. So the low is actually at 70% travel right now. And uh, the mid is at 100. And then the high is at 125, which I don't think I'll need. Although the high I probably will use for taxiing around, maybe the, the mid, but uh, the low should be enough. So that's why I moved on the servo horn, moved it in. And I might even need to move it in for, further, but I, 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 I won't know until I actually fly it. Uh, a couple other things, Steve, here, the CG-wise, if you look right here, this line right here represents about 70 millimeters, which is, I think, what the book said for CG. Um, I moved the battery a little farther forward and made my own tray, which I'll show you probably after the flight, I think. Um, and I'm actually balancing a little farther forward, maybe more like 60, okay, maybe a little ahead of that. Because I wanted this thing to be, wanted to make sure it was stable the first time out. And, in fact, I'll show you in here what I did with my battery tray. Steve, is that okay? Yep. Okay, I've got my Spectrum 3-cell 2200 pack all the way forward. I've got my shelf liner tray in there, which I made, and I didn't have put that in the other video, though, like assembly, because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it at the time. The receiver's right here. I've got one antenna right along here, and I've got one antenna. Steve, can you get in on that? Yep. One right there, and they're taped in pretty nicely, and um, I'm hoping that that's going to do it. Now, I wasn't sure what the book said to do because or how it was meant to be, but it looked like the battery was meant to be back here, and, um, and the receiver was meant to be here, but it was kind of a pain to do that, and I, I wanted a little slightly forward CG. So your battery range can only be moved just a little bit here to here, but we'll try it like this. Let's see what it does. Let's see, hopefully it's not too nose heavy, but I don't, I don't think it will be. Um, aileron throw, Steve, if you want to get in on that. Um, I've got, uh, that's low at 70%. That's medium at 100, and that's high. So I'm thinking I'm going to need mid to mid to low, and we'll see. The the horns are as follows too on the ailerons. Uh, can you get in on this, Steve? Yep. It looks like I'm at the the second or third hole. I think out from the center. You can see I didn't really put a way out on the end because again, way too much throw. Uh, the flaps I do have all the way out on the end, and the reason was is the rods were kind of short, so I needed that to get full flap travel. And you can see here as I extend the flaps here. Um, that's just like 10 to 15 degrees, and you can see that uh, that's full flaps. I don't think I'm even going to need that on this airplane, but, you know, we'll, we'll go with that. And um, a couple other things to point out about this plane is just the ball links are awesome. If you look at the wings, Steve, if you want to get to the tail, this thing's all ball link equipped, which is really, really nice. And then, uh, of course, for your tail wheel, you got this really nice easy connector. So. Uh, there's only one servo driving the rudder and the tail wheel, but you know this easy connector. You can just loosen that, and you can just turn your wheel and then just lock it in with the uh, with the set screw, so it lines up with your rudder. So it's really easy to to manually trim this thing anyway. Now I did notice when I set mine up that the actual flat spot on this on the on the actual shaft was off. So this rod, this horn right here, this nice aluminum horn for the tail wheel, it was not lined up 90 to 90 degrees to the center of this uh, uh, or or to the center line of the wheel so i actually had to unscrew the set screw in there slide this tail wheel out which was no big deal and just refile that flat spot so that horn is actually 90 degrees to the to the wheel does that make sense steve oh yeah yeah that's all i had to refile that and then now that it's 90 degrees that might be a one-off with mine but you know anyway um uh, that's really it for that and then uh, i think we're good to go uh let's do a quick run up i'll put my safety off here 
only going to fly it on three cell guys it's a three cell airplane i hear guys fly it with 4s but um you know maybe we'll do that with it later but for now we're just going to go with it as is and then we got to figure the elevator to flat mixing if there is any i hadn't done any of that yet so um oh and one more deal steve we're going to talk about this real quick um the landing gear doors they're really close to the grass there's a good possibility if you have tall cut grass and even today we might tear a door off i'm just going to try it it's pretty well groomed out here but normally for grass like this if you're flying off pavement it's not a big deal but uh, because of the grass we might snag a door so normally i would trim a quarter inch half inch off of the door for grass use so the 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 the, the, the uh the doors are not snagging on the grass so we'll see we could lose a door today but <laughs> we figured we'd try it as is and if not like i said if i tear one off then i'll know we really got to trim a little bit of that plastic off so it clears the grass so anyway with that you ready steve let's go fly let's see what we can do here i'll do a medium rate here on the elevator to start with and see if we can get this let's see how it taxis first on grass we'll kind of see see if we can get it rolling here right left up down left right or sorry right left <laughs> all right let's see if we can get it to taxi on this stuff that seems okay doesn't seem to be snagging or anything <laughs> again you got to have a pretty well groomed surface i'm just driving it around a little bit just to see i think a taxi's okay steve looks good it's not bad yeah a little bit it bounces a little bit there also i got my cg a little farther forward so All right, I'm holding my stick back till we can kind of get it rolling. Here we go, Steve. Okay. Ease some power in. Easing back on that elevator. There we go. Tails up. There we go. Oh, it does seem pitch sensitive. I was on high rate, but now I'm back to low, so. A little bit of trim here. I'm just going slow with it. I'm only about... A half throttle here, Steve. I'm not pushing it hard in the beginning, Steve. I'm just getting it trimmed up. Yes, sir. I'm going to go to low aileron because I don't think it needs all that movement. I tell you what, it seems almost a bit like the CG almost needs to come forward a bit a little more, but 60 seems okay for it, or where I got it seems good. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I'm hands off here. All right, let's see if I can get it a little lower here. We'll bring it down nice and low. That's full throttle. It's smooth. I'd say it's very scale-like in its speed right now. Let me bring it the other way here. Yeah, smooth. I tell you what, it's very quiet. It's almost deceiving because it's it's fairly quick the way it is. I think I need to tone those ailerons down a bit. Actually, I'm at 70% for the elevator, and I'm 70% for the uh, for the uh, ailerons as well. So All right, well, let's see. If, come by fast again, Steve. Here we go. Smooth. What do you think, Steve? That looks pretty good. It's small and quiet. It feels like it probably could use a little more power, you know, maybe 40 amp ESC and a 4S pack, but it, it, it's definitely good enough. It's, I wouldn't say it's underpowered, but I would say like a little more would kind of be fun with it. Yep. But it's, but it's flying scale. I mean, it, it does fly well. I probably will move my elevator Z-Bends in closer to the servo a bit so I can get a little more smoothness of control out of it but it's doing well because i'm flying around almost full throttle all the time but it's flying well let's roll it around man the roll rate is tremendous <laughs> wow and that's at 70 percent so yeah we might bump this up to 4s steve just to mess with it but I, it's not bad you know, when I, every time I, I pass by, I think, man, I think the landing gear's hanging down. But it's actually, <laughs> it's actually those scoops. Yeah. They, they're, 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 it's the scoops you're seeing, the uh, the wing scoops. The I guess those are radiators or something. Yep. But yeah, not bad, not bad. Very vibrant color. Real easy to see this thing. Go upside down with it. 
Yeah, flies well inverted. Peel away. All right, real nice. There we go. Spitfire inverted, yeah. Woo. Really cool. All right, let's do this, Steve. Now that we got it flying okay, let me drop some flaps. Let's see what it's going to do. Oh, I don't see any pitch up at all. Let's go full flaps. Oh, shoot, I'm not seeing wow. any at all. Yeah, wow. Cool. Maybe we don't need any flat mixing. All right, neat. Let's go, uh, let's do this. I'm going to do a loop out from it. The flaps are up. Let's go around the top. Nice. Roll again. Definitely needs a little negative elevator um, in, the, uh, in the roll, for sure. Let me do some sort of steep turns out front here, Steve. Nice. Flies great in closed quarters, but I, Steve, I think we need that to the CG just a hair forward even. All right, let's do some landings with it. Let's get the landing gear down. Gear's coming down. Let's do some landings without any flaps at all. Let's just see what it does. Very narrow landing gear on this thing. A little hot, a little hot on that one. I don't think I needed to be that hot. But hey, it lands well. It does good on grass. Hadn't broken a door yet. <laughs> but uh, nice flying model. I tell you, taxi's pretty good on grass. A little touchy on the controls, but I think that can be fixed with slightly forward CG, but I don't think we really need to. I think it's actually good the way it is. You see the, can you focus in on the gear door, Steve? Yep. See how they're just dragging the grass? If you if we trim like a quarter, maybe a half inch off those doors, it'll be better for the grass or you'll be less likely to tear them off. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Drive it right over here. Let me hit the safety there. Let's see what the battery's doing here. Real nice flying model. Um, uh, again, that's 60 CG. I would bring it forward, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't leave it. Uh, I'd say definitely for sure, folks, you know, put your battery all the way up front. Get it as far forward. Put your receiver back there, because CG-wise, it's, it's, it's controllable. I could tell if I, had it, if I had it 10 millimeters farther back, it'd be harder to fly. It'd be more pitch sensitive, but it's, it's, really, it's really not. And in fact, the elevator horn we talked about, I could probably go even one in on that. And even the ailerons, I'm thinking, I probably could go in another one on this. So um, we may do that on the, uh, on the next flight. But let me see what we got for battery. Steve, did you by chance estimate that flight time? Oh. Actually, I know sometimes you watch the timer. I, I, I really don't. I just I sort of use the force when I'm doing this stuff. <laughs> let's see what we got. All right, Steve, you want to wager what we got left? Uh, what's that, a 2200? Probably got 24 left 48 wow yeah i mean it's efficient on power i mean that's that's a good thing here let's take off again let's go with it again we'll get this in there somebody flying over also another thing i tend to do with most of my models if possible try to keep the power wires as best i can away from the antennas. That's why I try to put the power on one side, antenna there, antenna there. I mean, with small models, you really can't do too much, but um, but I try to anyway, if I can keep them separated. Sometimes the electricity or electric wires can create some fields and stuff. And All right, I'm on low everything here. Um, actually, I'm mid on the elevator, so. All right, here we go. Let's uh, get it rolling. Smoothly apply that power using some right rudder. Just let that tail get in the air, a little right rudder. There we go. Power's coming in. Landing gear's coming up. Nice. Very nice, though. Yeah, I'm definitely 70% definitely on the elevator uh, with that horn hole that I showed you guys. It seems to do okay there. Let me pitch back on the, let's see. Nice flyer, though. I'd say it's definitely got this, uh, uh, enough scale power on 3S. Uh, 4S, it would definitely uh, race right along, that's for sure. That's full throttle zooming by. It's very quiet. It's a little deceiving. 
All right, let's get the gear down. I'm going to try a landing with flaps. Now, here's where, <laughs> here's where we can tend to nose this thing over with flaps. So. Throw those flaps up, but not bad, not bad. No, I tell you, not really. Not really at all. I tell you, it's a good grass field airplane. As long as you got a good, uh, as long as you got a well-groomed grass surface, I mean, heck. That would be like six. What do you think, Steve? That is sweet, man. I, that's a small airplane. I tell you, I thought we were going to be nosing it over a bit and tearing gear doors off, but but again, if you got taller grass or divots, you, you might need to trim those nose gear, those uh, those doors, those gear doors, and we may end up doing that here. So, but for now, I think we're good. Let's see. All right, outstanding. Man, I'm impressed. Very cool little model. Safety's on. Steve, I don't know if you can get in on the light or not, but it's got a wing light there. Kind of hard to see during the daytime. Yeah, I got the light. But and then the green one really shows up a little bit better. Yep. So, but really nice, folks. Be sure to check out the uh, the assembly, the unbox and, and build we did on it, where we showed you how to get everything together. That'll all be available in the upper right hand corner of this video. Um, and also just on the RC Informer YouTube channel. Steve, you got anything else to add? No, oh, sweet airplane. I like that prep. It's a nice little plane. It also comes in the desert camo paint job, uh, which is really vibrant. I mean, it's real. It's a two-tone kind of brown and, and, a, and like a really dark blue underside. I'll throw some pictures up here for everybody to see. But uh, nice fly moss. Steve, can you get in on this tail logo? Yep. That is an awesome logo, man. I think that thing is so cool. Can you see that all right? Yeah. Can zoom in on it? Yeah, that's very impressive. Nice detail on this thing. Um, again, guys, check this out at Banana Hobby. This is the Blitz RC Works 1100 millimeter um, Spitfire Mark 24. Just super awesome airplane. Really nice. Um, we just did the first flight. We're now doing the second flight because we felt like maybe the CG needed to go forward just a hair. And we felt like... The ailerons and the elevator were maybe a little too sensitive. So a combination of CG, combination of maybe too much control throw. So what we did is we changed the elevator horn, which you have to take the wing off. You can't see it here, but I'll put an overlay up here. You can see what the horn looks like where I moved it in one more hole. Okay, And what that's going to do is tone down the elevator a little bit so we can actually use 100% travel. Uh, ailerons here, you can see what we did, Steve, you on, on that? Yep. The ailerons, I moved them in another hole because we were going down to 70% travel for everything, which tells me that, you know, we really could, could actually go in one, go to 100% and have a little finer control. So that plus the center of gravity, we moved our CG forward. Uh, 70 is where they recommend, which is about on the line. We were flying at about 60, a little farther forward. Now we're at about 55. We added one ounce of weight to the nose, which I will put an overlay up here where you can see what we did. We just took some steel weights from Harbor Freight. We stuck them in the nose, kind of glued them around the underside, right kind of under here, or not glued them, but taped them. And what that did is it shifted the CG forward a little bit. So we're going to see if that make, gives it, it might give it a little more tendency to nose over a bit. We're not sure a little bit, but mostly we're trying to get that CG forward for the stability effect. So. The stability, fixing the horns. Let's see how it flies. You ready, Steve? That's cool. Let's see what it what we what we're doing here. Also, if you need to move the CG forward, you could use a bigger battery too. We just don't have it. We have 2200s here today. 2200 3S packs. In fact, uh, in fact, there's what I have in here right now. I stuck a roaring top, 2200, 35C pack. It's almost the same weight as the Spectrum we had in there because we uh, uh we're letting that one cool down a bit. So. All right, here we go. Let me fire up the power here a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, Steve, no flaps on this. And, uh, okay, right, left, up, down. All right, I'm going to go to a higher travel now because I think I'm going to need it now. All right, now we're at 100% travel on everything. And let's see if we have any nose over issues. Here we go. All right, here we go. Because it's probably going to be lighter in the tail now. I'm going to drive it around a little, see if it, if it's doing better. Yeah, it seems to be okay. I don't, I'm not seeing any major nose. Nose is bouncing maybe a hair more, but you know, hey, we're on grass. It seems to be okay. Take it off. Ease that power in. Staying on that rudder, getting that tail in the air. 
flying it the whole time. There we go. All right, gear's coming up. All right, success. All right, there we go. We'll have to retrim it because we re really redid all our controls. There we go. Yeah, it seems a little more stable. That's full throttle. Okay, nice. Let me trim the nose down. A little bit of right aileron. Yeah, it's definitely not hunting around as much. Yeah, it's definitely more stable. We definitely got it smoother. I'm like hands off here, and it's it's going nice. Let me trim it nose down just a little more. Yeah, very nice. Very smooth. I think that fixed it, Steve. I'm thinking the CG where it's at now, which is about 55, roughly 55 on the CG, seems really good for this. It looks real smooth. Very smooth. I was I was kind of playing with the controls a little before. Not bad, but it seemed like the ailerons were very sensitive, very touchy, and so was the pitch. I have to scrape the ground here with it. Yeah, this thing needs a little negative elevator when you're going inverted, that's for sure. Now let me try a lower aileron rate, lower elevator rate. That's still 70%, but wow, that really does smooth it out now. Now it's very manageable for probably for most people would probably like it this way. Yeah, yeah, the pitch is real smooth now. Yeah, very cool. Very nice. I'm going to go back to 100 on everything. I think what I'd like to see on this is really a four cell system in it. I mean, it's got plenty of power. It does what it needs to do. It comes by here, coming by hot again. It's definitely scale. But yeah, I can see this with a 4S power system. It'll take the battery, so. All right, let's loop it. Nice. Roll. Very nice, very nice. Very nice flying plane. I tell you, the only Spitfire, Steve, I've flown is the one we got on floats. Yep. You know, I have never actually had a Spitfire on wheels before. This is the first time I've had one to fly. And this is the Mark 24, which was the the most recent version of the Spitfire, the most updated, the last model they made. So I think it had an 80% imp improvement in climb performance from the original or something, and it weighed twice as much or something, but it was had so much power. I think it was a Griffin motor in it or something instead of the Merlin, so it was like 2,000 horsepower or something like that. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Point roll. Yeah, that nose dips a little bit. That might just be a stip fi uh, Spitfire uh, thing. <laughs> All right, let's get some steep turns out front, Steve. I'll come in fast here. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Ooh, look at that sunlight. We got sunlight. Sunlight on the models. Cool. Oop, that nose diving on me a little bit. Can't blame the wind today. <laughs> Roller upside down. Very nice upside down here. All right, Steve, let's come by inverted. Here we go. Very nice, very nice. All right, let's get to some landings. Landing gear's coming down. I'll do this without, uh, without any flaps. Let's see how we can get this down. Hey, this thing likes to land hot. It feels good coming in hot, you know? It just uh, has a good feel to it. Let's check our battery real quick here. But I tell you what, guys, 55 millimeters roughly on the CG, and bring those flight controls in, and you got a really much smoother flying airplane. I, I, think, I think that that's 70 millimeter in the manual or whatever for the CG, I think it's I think that's too far aft. I mean, you can do it. It'll fly there. I hadn't actually flown it there yet, but here, let's see. I've only flown it at the 60. Let me see if I can just see what our... Check this out, Steve. Let me plug this in, see what we got. All right, we are at... Let me put my glasses on. What do you think, Steve? 42. 60. 
60. 60%. Yeah, you can fly this. The thing is, that's the beauty about 3S. It's got enough power, but man, you can fly kind of for a good all day. Steve's saying to himself, oh man, my arms are killing me now. <laughs> I got to keep filming it for Rich. <laughs> here, let's uh, let's go up a little more. We'll do a little more if you're cool with that. Yep. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's perfect now. See, I'm flying everything at 100% travel now. Easing the power in slowly. Little right rudder. Easing the power and let that tail come off. There we go. Ease the power in, let it come up. Real nice. There we go. Very cool airplane. What, what, what were the ladies called that uh, ferried these things? Do you remember? Well, the wasps in the wasps or something? Like that. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of ladies that ferried these things around and they said that um, the Spitfire was a, a lady in the air but a bitch on the ground. Because <laughs> <laughs> the landing gear, I guess, was so narrow. Yeah. But that's what they... Uh, that's a nice airplane, man. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go pure vertical with it because we hadn't really done that with it. Yeah, it peters out a bit. Yeah, it's not a vertical airplane. Like I said, it could use some power probably for that. Gears down. Let's go with one setting of flaps, and let's see how it is on flaps. There's a greater chance we might nose it over like this. I'm holding that stick back, throwing the flaps up. No, nah, I tell you, man, this thing lands great on grass. Holy smokes. I'm really surprised we haven't hit... Um, hit a pothole and tore the gear door off yet. Uh, I really think that most people with grass, you're going to have to trim the doors. I can I can actually hear the doors scraping the grass a little bit, you know? Um, and you can see them touching. I mean, they're definitely touching the grass. Take it off! Right rudder, right rudder. Easing that power in, half throttle coming up with it. Yeah, awesome. by fast very cool very cool very neat model whoa that wing dip dipped on me saw that good flyer very nice model all right steve i think i'm gonna bring it on in landing gears coming down i tell you let's do this let me come by i'm gonna go full flaps with it gears up let me do a little slow flight pass with it and see how it does going by slow. That's something I really hadn't done with it. Yeah, it's getting windy now. Getting windy. All right, let's bring it on in. Gear's coming down. We got some wind here, so I'm going to I'm going to leave flaps up. Ooh, yeah, a little dip there. Yeah, there's the bitch on the ground part. <laughs> I tell you, it's not as bad though as a um, as a BF 109. BF 109s go way up on the wingtip, so you almost every time you scrape one, if you got a model of one. But um, but this is not bad. I mean, it taxis great. Notice I'm holding full stick back because you want to keep uh, the prop wash over the elevator, so it's not nosing up. But holy smoke, Steve, I'm impressed. This is a nice little model. Yeah, not bad at all. Aside from maybe needing a touch of power or something, but man, it's. It's a, it's a good bird. So um, let's take a look at the, I don't know if you can get in on the wheels the, the, or the, uh, the doors. Yep. There's a little bit of grass and dirt and stuff. But um, man, we hadn't torn it. Let me put the safety on. I already got that on. We hadn't torn up a, a door, so, you know, it's doing well. But uh, here, let me get the gear down. Let's take a look at the battery floor. Guys, I modded the battery floor, which I may even mod further. But uh, the existing battery floor was this chunk of foam right back in here that I tore out of the plane because it was just weird and it had the battery way, the battery was actually back here. So I took the battery and pushed it all the way to the front. And uh, Steve, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this out of here real quick because I want you all to see what I did. Can you see that all right? Yep. Okay, I put in a separate floor with shelf liner in there. I actually glued a wood floor. I took that goofy foam thing back there, battery all the way far forward, 
and that's all you need. In fact, my battery floor is too long. This, I thought I might have to shift it back, but I'm probably going to take an inch or two off the back of that floor because it only ne it needs to go all the way forward. So, but that's my custom brew. Uh, we'll talk about that. We may do a live chat where we talk about that. But uh, anyway, but super nice model, folks. Check this out at uh, Banana Hobby again. 1100 millimeter Spitfire. They also have 11 mil 1100 millimeter P40. Um, there is a T28 coming that's really cool. Uh, so a big line of 1100 millimeter Warbirds coming from uh, Banana Hobby, 105 millimeter EDF jets. We're going to have them all here for you guys at RC Informer. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned. Uh, use our links in the description below. If you buy something, guys, that supports our channel at no cost to you guys. Please, please, please like and subscribe, guys, if you want to see those new videos coming out. Again, we've got the 105 millimeter series, all the 1100s coming to the channel. Uh, we got a lot of them coming, so hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and that'll let you know when new videos are out, when we put them out. So, uh, anyway, I think that's it. Steve, any comments? Sweet, fine little airplane. Cool, I tell you, taxi's fire. great, handles great. It builds with just a couple of screws. Again, check out that build guide, uh, that assembly uh, we did of it and all that. So, anyway, guys, thanks for checking out RC Informer. Thanks for stopping by, and as always, guys, we'll see you next time.